So the time has finally arrived. It's time to release the frogs back into the wild, back to the pond where we got them from. I've been waiting for this time for a few weeks now, and today's the day. So over the last few months, the UK where I live here has been under a kind of a heat wave. It's been horrendously hot and dry. The weather has been a little bit like this. But today, today it's raining, uh, which is perfect because now I can take my frogs and I can release them back into the pond and the, the area will be damp. Um, frogs have permeable skin, which means that they absorb and lose water very easily. Uh, so if I was to release them in the middle of a heat wave on a hot sunny day where everything is dry and crispy, they would, uh, you know, if they tried to leave the, the area of the pond where the water is, they would dry up very quickly and, they, and you know, they could easily die. Um, now frogs, they don't live uh, in the pond, in the water itself. They will live in the surrounding areas, uh, in the sort of the vegetation, and um, in, they need it to be moist. But it is raining right now, so it's a perfect time to release them. So I want to feed them one more time before going. Unfortunately, I'm not too sure I'm going to be able to do that because I, I'd run out of crickets for them. I uh, went down to the pet shop today to get them some more, just to give them one last feed before releasing them. And um, the pet shop had been missed out on their delivery and they only had a few boxes left. And all the crickets that were there were way bigger than anything that I think the frogs are going to eat. I did buy a box, we're going to try it. Um, but um, I think it's going to be too big. And uh, my, my dog is now making this noise. Just say hello. Say hello to everybody. <laughs> He's quite interested. Right, well I'm going to get the crickets and we'll give them a bit of a feed. So these are the guys I've got. These are third instar black crickets. Now normally I feed my guys second instar brown crickets, uh, but they just didn't have any. And the third, they did have some third instar brown crickets, but they were even bigger than these guys. Uh, these guys are, I think they're going to be way too big. Um, normally you go by the kind of size between the eyes of the frogs, and how well we're going to be able to see this. You can focus in on the frogs. So you can kind of see where their eyes are. Basically, if it fits in their mouth, they can eat it. However, these guys, I think they're, they're too big. We're going to try anyway because otherwise I've got nothing else I can give them. So we'll put a few in. They'll probably try and go for them. Probably end up spitting them out because they'll be too big. But you never know. Some of the some of the frogs have got pretty big. They may well be able to eat some of the smaller ones. We can try. That's what we can do. Here, an escaped cricket has got caught up in the spider's web. The spider has come to investigate, but much like the frogs, it doesn't seem to want it and is actually working to free it from its web.
active. Most of those crickets were just too big for the frogs. A couple of the bigger frogs in this tank did manage to feed, which I'm really glad about. Unfortunately, these, these smaller ones here, they're not gonna be able to, they're just too big. Unfortunately, I have nothing else to give them. Um, I did want to give them a good feed before releasing them, make sure, you know, give them the best start possible once I release them out into the wild. But you gotta remember, out in the wild, there's plenty of food out for them, so they're just gonna have to live for themselves. Uh, interestingly, the, um, we watched the spider, that wasn't interested either, but it's fine. So really all that's left now is just to get these guys into a little tub, take them down to the pond and say goodbye to them. So let's go and do that. Okay, so to transport the frogs to the pond, at first I thought I would use one of the boxes as the crickets came in. Um, but the inside of here is quite rough where the holes have been poked in, so that's not really good. They've got delicate skin, they don't really want them to hurt themselves. So the only thing I can really do is I've got this kind of lunchbox here, this old lunchbox. I've put in, I'll come bit closer, I've put in some uh, fresh moss in here to keep it damp, keep them somewhere to go. It's, it's going to be, well I don't think it'll be quite airtight, but uh, I'm sure there'll be plenty of air for them just to get to uh, the, um, uh, the pond. And when you're handling frogs you want to have wet hands because of their skin is permeable. As I said before, it will absorb water through their skin. So you don't want any kind of chemicals on your hands at all. So make sure they're clean and slightly moist as well so that the frogs won't absorb the kind of salt from the, from the hands. So now I've got the job of trying to catch them. Okay, we have now uh, 12 frogs. We've caught them all. Now it's time to set them free. While walking up to the pond, I spotted this creature. It's a slow worm and is unfortunately quite dead. Slow worms are legless lizards, not snakes. I'm not sure about the cause of death, but you may notice there's a lot of burned vegetation here and that may be related. It seems that the vegetation has been burned quite extensively around the site. I suspect it's done by the council to control the heathland, but there have been reports of arson recently, so I'm not sure. In the United Kingdom, the slow worm has been granted protection status. The slow worm has been decreasing in numbers, and under the Wildlife and Countryside Act in 1981, it is illegal to intentionally kill, injure, sell or advertise to sell them. arrived to the pond and just absolutely astounded at how much it has shrunk. If you go back to the first couple of episodes in this series and you uh, compare it to how it looks now, um, basically all this bit here with these sort of the green plants here, this was underwater, um, that it would come right up to where these bushes are. Um, it's completely completely shrunk and you can kind of see where the tufts of grass over there are, that's where the, the bank uh, of you know where the water went up to uh, before and it has really really shrunk but it is raining and it has been raining all day for the first time in weeks really um, so hopefully you know this pond will fill up a little bit and uh, we can actually uh, be confident in the fact that the frogs will be okay so anyway I'm going to try and find a spot around here um, that's going to be suitable to uh, release the frogs and um, let's say goodbye to them so I've chosen this point uh, here, there's kind of a bit of uh, the bank here with a bit of mud and the pond is right there. We were just over on the other side there for the last clip. Um, this bit here is right close to the undergrowth so the frogs can kind of choose where they want to go, whether they want to stay in the water here, stay in the mud bit or go off into the underground, that's probably the best bit. Uh, I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see this but if you look really carefully into the water you will be able to see uh, some tadpoles swimming around. Um, I think I see some with back legs. Um, so they are developing, obviously a lot slower than the ones we've got, but I'm guessing that's maybe due to maybe the size of the ponds, maybe the, the smaller amount of water, the quicker they develop. I'm not entirely sure what the reasons would be, but um, I'm not sure how well you can see that. You may see one or two just come to the surface. The water quality is obviously not very good, um, or at least it's not very clear anyway. 
But okay, I think it's time to release our little chaps and hopefully they're going to be okay. One final piece. On the way home I spotted this tiny fellow hopping around near the edge of the pond. Proof that the tadpoles in the pond are surviving and growing into little frogs. Well thank you so much for watching this year and I hope you'll return next year for another series of Frog Watch. Goodbye. <laughs>